Hey guys, Gal Level here. And today I'm not gonna show you my face because I'm sick, my allergies are through the roof, and it's too damn hot to be on camera. What we're gonna talk about today is how to set up your overlay packs inside of Streamlabs OBS. Let's say you just downloaded Streamlabs OBS, you've installed it, you know uh, everything works well, you probably have one scene with one gameplay uh, source, but now you wanna take it to the next level. You bought an overlay pack or you paid an, a graphic artist to make a custom one for you. Now you have all the files you just need to know. How can I put it inside of Streamlabs OBS effectively? And this is what I'm gonna show you today. So, quick recap on Streamlabs OBS. Dashboard, once you are logged in with your account, dashboard is basically the Streamlabs OBS site. This is where you're gonna check all your alerts, your widgets. This is where you can set up your donation goals and all of that. This is where you modify your widgets, but also take a look at your account in general. Themes is, of course, the overlay or, or just graphic design library. Uh, they also have widget themes now, which is awesome. You can check it out. If you do not have any money or you do not, or you just, you're just starting and you don't want necessarily to have something personal, you can go there. They have a all of them are free, they have pretty good stuff. Um, I recommend it if you really don't have any money and you don't want anything personalized. Editor is where I spend most of my time. When I'm streaming, I'm usually on the editor tab uh, because I have a live preview, I have my scenes, I also have my sources where I can toggle things on and off. I also have my mixer so I can check my audio levels and my chat on the right side. The live tab is where you will find your recent events. If someone followed, I have a lot of questions from people telling me, oh, someone's followed me, but I didn't get to see the alert, so I don't know who it was. Uh, this is where you usually go to save yourself and say, oh, sorry, I didn't see it um, when it was happening, but thank you, um, Morpheus, for the follow, for example. <laughs> At the bottom, it shows you a live preview. You have your mixer and your scenes. My only problem is that I do not have access to my sources. This is why I don't spend much time on this uh, tab. So let's go back to the editor. So, okay, let's say your gameplay streamer, which is the most popular. I'm gonna try to go as fast as possible. So feel free to pause or uh, slow down the video if you have to. Here you have your scenes. Here you have your sources. What are sources? Sources are the individual layers that form your scene. This is where you're gonna put your alerts, this is where you're gonna put images, this is where you're gonna put your overlays. And scenes are um, an assembly of a bunch of sources. This is where you will, you will have titles such as starting soon scene, uh, be right back scene, gameplay scene. So let's start with the gameplay. I'm just gonna rename this to gameplay so to avoid confusion. And here the first thing you want to get in is some actual gameplay. So we'll click on the plus and we're gonna find game capture right there. So I'm gonna click add source. Game capture, if you're gonna use the same, if you play multiple games and you're gonna use the same game capture source, you can just keep the name game capture because you know whatever game you're gonna be playing is gonna be that source. So what you can do here in mode is gonna say capture any full screen Application, if you only have one screen, you're not gonna have any full screen application, so that's bad to go. Capture specific window, and now on a window, you can um, you can select the specific game that you want to capture. In my case, it's Little Nightmares. I have it running in the background. So we're gonna use that. It's not full screen because I don't have two screen. I usually play at a lower resolution. Anyways, so I can see chat at the same time on the same screen. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna add all the elements that make up a good gameplay screen. So it's gonna be um, webcam overlay, you're gonna have your list, bar list, whatever you call it, and uh, you're going to have your bit jar. So first things first, let's add the camera overlay. If you have an image as your camera overlay, like a PNG with transparency or a JPEG, you would go to image. In my case, we're gonna be using the Fortnite Mega Overlay Pack that I just released on gumroad.com slash get level. We're gonna be using that so we know that the webcam overlay is actually animated. So it's a video file. So click on media source to import your video file. Did I click? Yep, add source. I'm gonna call it camera overlay. and we're gonna locate the file. Okay, as you can see here, my file is a .mov file. That means it, it's video with transparency or with an alpha channel for, for those who are experienced. So boom, we have it here, but wait, it's gonna disappear 
after seven seconds and that's not what we want because we forgot to loop this little box here okay so if you have anything that's supposed to go on forever in a loop you just click on the loop thing we're gonna drag this down a little bit so as I said I don't have my camera right now but we're still gonna add a video capture source as it's gonna show my watermark since I use a DSLR to live stream so click the plus and uh, find video capture device. This is where you would also find your webcam. I'm gonna call this one camera. Camera. Press enter. So this is, um, as you can see, Elgato is also a um, capture device, but whatever, just click OK. And now we're just going to place it intelligently. Try to keep everything proportional, no matter what the shape of the uh, camera overlay is. What you want to do is hold Alt and click and drag on the left or, or, or right, on the sides or top and bottom. And now what we can do is drag this down if we want it to be underneath the camera overlay. I always, I, I, I always do my overlays in a way that people can put their cameras behind them so it looks flush it looks perfect and if I have a little bit of like shadows going in it will also affect what's on camera now that we have that set up we're gonna go ahead and add um, the followers name the, the last follower uh, last subscriber we don't have subscribers or donations on this account but that's fine I'm gonna click on text to add one um, I'm gonna call this one follower. Actually, I'm gonna call it recent follower. Naming your stuff in order to not be completely confused while you're streaming is very important. So we're not gonna use any of those. What we need here is read from file because we're not gonna type in the name of the most recent follower ourselves. We want a file to do that. So when you installed Streamlabs OBS, it probably asks you to choose a specific folder where you want your log files to be. And this is where you need to go find your log files. Mine are in this folder called uh, logs. And we're gonna search for a most recent follower. Double click on it. Turns out this, <laughs> the most recent streamers, oh my God. We're gonna change the font real quick. I would like to have a uh, Calibri. And we're gonna click OK. And not do that. Up. So if you have things that are set and you're, you're sure that you're never gonna move them, you can go here and click on the little lock pad thing. That way, if I click and drag, see it's not moving. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing for the camera and the same thing for the camera overlay for now, anyways. So recent follower, now I can just click and drag without any issue. It's a little big, that's fine. We're gonna drag it down. If you want more uh, preciseness, just use your um, up and down arrows or left and right. Since I don't have subscribers or donators, what I'm gonna do is just duplicate this. So I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna paste a reference. Um, pasting a reference means that everything that you do to the original file is going to be affected throughout all of them, all of the references that you, you duplicated. If you just duplicate it, it's going to create a brand new source and you can affect them individually. So I'm going to paste reference once and twice. And just drag it down and this should be good. So far, it's looking pretty good. Just, okay, now I know that if ever I switch games and I want my overlay to be somewhere else, let me unlock everything that I locked, well, most of it. If I wanna move something, I don't wanna have to move everything separately, especially if I'm doing it live on stream and I wanna go fast. You want to be able to move everything together. So what you can do is click and select. Basically, you're gonna hold shift and click the top layer and the bottom layer and you can create a group right here. This group will call will be called camera pack. It's not the most original name. Now what you can do is select the group and move it. Plus on top of that if you know that you're not gonna be changing um, any of that it only takes one spot in your sources okay so now let's add a widget what you're gonna go do it click plus okay and here on the right side you will see widgets and the tip jar is something that I like having on my screen at all times because people like interacting with it so we're gonna click tip jar and add source 
just call it the jar that's fine um, here it's not gonna show you anything if you haven't set it up in your dashboard yet but that's fine it's just gonna load up the default one and we're just gonna do with this for now okay make it smaller gonna drag it bottom right that looks pretty good just like that now I get that some designs do not have uh, most recent followers, donations, and all of that incorporated into the webcam overlay. So what you can do here, for example, is hold Alt, drag that up, click on the little arrow, and then turn off those things. This, this, and that. And you can group it up again. There's one survivor. There you go. Now you have your camera overlay. So some designs, for example, in that Fortnite uh, Mega Pack, it's included with it to have a little bar that would include those uh, most recent um, interactions. This one's going to be an image, so we're going to click on image. It's a PNG uh, transparent file. We're going to call this lower list. There's multiple names for it. Okay, it's here, lower list. Just gonna click OK. This is in a video, so there's no worries about it. So you can drop it here like that. All right, actually looks pretty good. And if I wanted to add the follower, I already have it like here. I'm gonna paste a duplicate. Now we're gonna drag this. Okay, we're gonna copy this. This time I'm gonna paste a reference in case I want to move any of it. And of course, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna group it up. Call it lower list group, all right? So on the right side, I purposely left that space empty in case people want to put like social media or, or anything. But if you've seen any streamer, you will probably be like, hey, I see those names. They're usually scrolling. How do I do that? The answer is simple. Since we have a bunch of references, I'm going to do it on one. It's going to affect all of them, but you will probably have to go uh, one by one to, to add the filter. So yes, you right click on the source, go to filters, click on the plus, um, choose scroll. It's that simple. It's that simple. Click done and then um, just choose your speed. So horizontal speed. There you go. Now, when people have different name sizes what i like to do is limit the width limit <laughs> limit the width and that means that whatever the size of the name it's not going to overstep those boundaries in that case i'd say it's more 70. there you go maybe a little too fast and now on your lower bar everything is moving we could do the same thing here. I'm gonna hold Alt. Find the first one. Filters again. Plus. Make it look good. And there you go. So now I've showed you how to add video capture devices, how to add widgets and also how to add most recent followers and stuff like that and those texts that will automatically update themselves which is awesome so once you have that you're pretty much set cool thing now is that for example you have a camera pack here let's say you have another scene where you need the the exact same camera pack with the exact same sources you can copy the group and then all you have to do is paste either a reference or a duplicate I also showed you how to use filters. So if the camera overlay pack that you have, you don't really like it, what you can do is add a filter to the specific overlay. So I'm gonna click on camera overlay. I'm gonna right click, go on filters. And in this case, I'm going to choose color correction. Now I have color correction. What I want to shift is the hue. And now I have a green camera overlay. Now it's orange. You can also play with the saturation, bump it up to make it pop. Uh, you can also play with the gamma. 
So if you want the lower bar to be the exact same thing, you just have to memorize the value, the values that you added, and it will be the exact same uh, color. But we're not gonna do that. You can also turn off your filter, and it will go back to normal, and you can come back here, switch it on and off. All right, so now we have our gameplay uh, scene. We can go ahead and create the other ones. This is technically the most complicated, Oh, I almost forgot. We need to add the alerts because you need your alerts to be playing on every single uh, scene you're in. So we're going to click on plus and on the widgets, we're going to find, is it in widgets? It should be alert box. There we go. I'm going to call it alert box. Here we have the alert box settings. You can put uh, 1920 by 1080 because that's what I personally enjoy. Oh, this is good because I'm going to show you um, a little technique to move things around. So we're going to click done. So as you can see, it, it is not centered. It's off to the right. What you can do is right click here, go to transform and then click fit to screen. Now it's centered and it's scaled perfectly. If you want to make sure that our alert box is working, we can go down here and click on test widgets because the alert box is a widget. And we're going to click on follow to see if we see something. There it is. <laughs> now this is not the best example because it is not um, in the dashboard. It is not configured to appear here, but there you go. And we can see our bit jar is already uh, reacting. So now we have our complete gameplay scene. Let's go ahead and create a starting soon screen. This one is completely empty. So let's add our starting soon overlay. In our case, it's a video, so we're going to go to media source. Probably call it and add new source. Click here. And here we have our animated uh, starting soon screen. We're going to click on loop to make sure that it loops. And there you go. Now, the great thing is there are two ways to add sources that you already have in another um, scene. For example, if I wanted to, the jar here to appear on my starting soon screen, I could either copy it and then paste it. I don't think I need to tell you the, the difference between reference and duplicate anymore. I'm going to delete it to show you the second way. Or if I wanted to add the jar again, I could go to the jar, add source. And here you will see I already have an existing source. I can just click here and add existing source. Now my jar is here and I can place it wherever I want. If I want my jar to be um, somewhere else, for example, if you want to flip things around, you can also right click and go to transform and you can flip vertical, flip horizontal and um, you can of course rotate there you go I kind of like rotating my jar now if you want to add a group of sources in that case you can mostly only copy it so I'm gonna go with the lower list because some people like to see the most recent contributors and I'm going to go here and paste a duplicate. In that case, I would suggest a duplicate instead of a reference because it could affect your gameplay if you modify it here. Your gameplay scene, that is. Now you'll see in this particular um, overlay pack, I always leave this empty space. This is where you could either write your name or your slogan or even put something like your social media contact. So if I wanted to do that, I could go uh, image, I'm gonna call it Twitter pick, add new source. I don't really recommend doing it like that. It's better like if you have Photoshop, just create a PNG and just slap it in there. But if you don't have Photoshop, I can understand. Just download some social media stocks and you're good. So now I have Twitter here, drag that down. The cool thing is that you can also add filters to that. I'm going to add a color correction filter. I kind of want this to be white. 
so it contrasts. Um, it, it will contrast with the background. So I'm just gonna go gamma up. Okay, brightness. And now what I'm going to do is change media here. And I'm going to go ahead and find my alerts inside the uh, Fortnite Mega Pack. Okay, now my image was loaded. So um, let's test it out. Now, in order to make this work perfectly, I actually have to have my alert be the exact size my alert box, I need it to be the exact si size of the image, of the alert image. So I'm going to go here, double click, and this can't be full screen because it wasn't meant to be full screen. So I'm going to find my image and find out what size it is. Okay, once I find my image, I'm going to right click, properties, go to details, and I should have the exact size, okay? 904 by 168. I can place it wherever I want. This means that we have a higher chance of having everything be in the middle. It's the top right, actually. So if I test it now. There was a little bit of lag here. Let's test it again. There you go. So this is what it would uh, look like.
Of course, you can tweak it, play with the CSS, make it make it be in the middle or play with the text size or even the custom message. I'm going to try getting rid of the custom message to see if it will be centered. And there we go. So that's pretty much all you need to know to keep your overlays very, very clean, you know, by creating groups, by duplicating stuff. So for the chat here, as you can see, everything disappeared when I left. What you can do is click here and untake the, that box that said shut down source when not visible. Basically when it's not visible, when you're on another thing, it, it would just shut it down and reactivate it. So now if we type something, let's just type the exact same thing all the poggers and we go to starting soon and we come back it should still have them perfect i'm sorry i'm sorry i didn't have the webcam to show you the example but i guess this was pretty pretty um self-explanatory that was still very descriptive you can just imagine my face over there <laughs> sometimes animated overlays will stop moving all you have to do is just double click and done Um, one option that a lot of people don't know about is that you can also add scenes to scenes, which is awesome. Let's say if you have a be right back screen that has a dedicated space for your gameplay screen, as you can see here, we can actually add it. So I could be like, hey, this is my gameplay screen, but we'll be right back, you know, and everything is just working perfectly. Let me delete that. We copy the social media one. All right, let me stop tweaking it and just call it a day. Guys, if you have any questions, please let me know in a comment section below and I will try my best to answer you. Hopefully everything was clear. You can just switch in between your scenes now. And if you cannot switch in between your scenes because you can't open up OBS, you can set up shortcuts. That is in settings, shortcuts, hotkeys, my bad and you can actually um, go to specific scenes. Like if you wanna go to full screen, you could go switch the scene. Let me put C, done, and here I press C and it switches. The next tutorial I'm going to do is going to be about transitions. So it took me a while to work on it because I did not want to just make a tutorial about transitions and not have transitions to give you guys. So what I'm gonna do is prepare a transition pack. It's not gonna be free, but it's probably gonna be 99 cents. That way, once you know how to add transitions, you already have your transitions to, to be added, you know? And if you guys are really interested, I might even show how I made them in Adobe After Effects. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching while I was sick. I'm sorry for the very low energy and very, very long uh, tutorial, but I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much once again. Get level out.